All right, welcome back to my high priority channel. We are going to try something I saw on the internet. I've been reading a lot about cleaning carburetors and different ideas and different techniques. And some people are using simple green. Some people are using a chemical called chem dip. It's kind of old school. It comes in a like a paint can style jar. It's got a basket in it. You put all the pieces in there. You let it soak. It's kind of toxic and it's super expensive. It's like 30 bucks for the whole kit. So we're going to try to do this on the cheap. We're going to use pine saw. So I'm not sure how it'll work. Some people on some forums and on the interwebs have said that it works all right. So we're going to give it a shot. So we'll go ahead and tear this carburetor down. We'll see how terrible it looks like on the inside and then we'll soak it. And then we'll check it out and see how well four dollars worth of pine salt does. All right, let's get going. It's a KLT 160. It's got a Makuni carb on it. I, in the earlier shot, you saw me. I had to put some heat in here to get the slide to come out. It's real rough down in here, so. But it's sloshing around. I sprayed WD-40 into it for about a week, thinking that might. Um, free that up but it never did so let's go ahead and pull this apart this probably hasn't been apart in over 20 years so let's check it out i bought this from an auction and it was sitting in the back of a barn so let's go ahead and take this apart and see what's inside here That's pretty rough. The needle stuck. I can see that's stuck right there. This is really rusty. All right, took me a second to get the floats out, but they popped out of there. Pretty corroded, we'll see if they're any good. This is finally loosened up. Jesus. Look down in there, that's totally plugged up. That's where the seat came from. just mud. Rusty mud. Gross. All right, well, this has been soaking this Makuni carb off of my Corona Kawasaki has been soaking in 50-50 pine saw and water. You guys saw how bad it was before. That ain't bad. Holy cow. I'll do a side-by-side -side picture of some of this if I can, but now I did turn this aluminum a little black, which I've heard that 
it'll probably clean up. I've heard that Simple Green does the same thing. There's the inside. That was a lot better than what it was, so. That is super cool. I don't even think Pine Saw is that bad for you. It does say to, you know, they show them wearing gloves and all that garbage, but. I do say keep it away from your eyeballs and your skin, but I'm not really worried about it, so. Let's go and snag this out of here. Yeah, it's super black. It's got this black crap coming off of it. But you know, I think that'll clean up. That doesn't look too bad. Let's see this top part here. Oh yeah. That looks fine. Now this here still looks kind of plugged up though. But all this looks relatively good. Like really impressed. I mean look at that. 50-50. And I did an online search and found people said they're using Pine Saw and that it was three dollars or four bucks at Target, so I figured I'd give it a go. We'll see how bad this line still is. This might still be. Oh yeah, there's still a bunch of sh a bunch of sh in there. I can feel it, and that's the the feed line in. It comes in here somewhere. It goes right through here into there, so I bet we could blow that out pretty easy. A little mud rust in there. All right, we'll go ahead and pour some of this out of here. It got kind of brown. I mean, yeah, change color a little bit. Let's make your garage smell pretty good. That's crazy. This was stuck in that seat so bad, it came out all together, all seized in there. So I'll get all these cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and assemble this. Stay tuned. All right, here we are. Got everything pretty much cleaned up. This carb actually came out really good. It took a lot of time. I had to get a little wire to run down the fuel inlet and comes right here where the seat sits so that was all plugged up so i got that all cleaned out blew it out with air they say that pine saw and simple green kind of turns these a dark color you can really see it all i cleaned this with were a couple brushes a toothbrush a couple picks and and mainly some fine steel wool and that really I mean, really polished everything up. I got all this stuff. I'll show a before and after picture. Here's this. I mean, it. Yeah, here this is. It's really. Like I said, the only numbers on this thing are those right there. There's those one and one dash two in the bottom there. And then on the floats, it actually says 26. So maybe this is a VM26, I do not know. Go ahead and show this again. See how clean this got compared to the other one. Picture of it. All right, what did you think of the pine saw and water method? Letting it soak and then pulling it out and scrubbing the hell out of it to get it to look like this. Steel wool, brushes, some picks, gets us this result. So what do you think? I do think a chem dip kit would have worked better and less time consuming, but 
If you have some time and are willing to get your hands dirty, I think this method works just fine. Now, did pine saw do better than other degreasers? I doubt it. I bet it, you could use any degreaser to do this and you'd probably get relatively the same result. Um, but it worked just fine for me. So I know I didn't show a bunch of the scrubbing and the cleaning. It was kind of a pointless waste of time to show every bit of uh, scrubbing every part and how much I scrubbed it. I did scrub it a lot, I'm not gonna lie, but it turned out good. And it was, you know, like I said, $4 versus a $30 chem dip kit. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, if any of you have questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. If you like the idea, let me know. If you have a better idea, please let me know. And if you want to follow along with this build, go ahead and subscribe. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.